Good morning, guys. Happy Tuesday. Take a look at the futures. The Q is up almost about 1%, and the SPY here just about the same. So what we have here, guys, is a market that is tired. We had the daily squeezes. We got a beautiful push here off the 21 EMA, and we got our 2-3 to three ATR move away from the mean. We ran out of gas, and back home we came. So you look at the squeeze indicator, and look at the month of August. If we just look at the Qs in the month of August, once these squeezes fire, and once the market starts kind of banging here on momentum, the move tends to last until we run out of gas, until that momentum gets exhausted. And we can really simplify things as far as entries, exits, and just overall approach to the market utilizing the squeeze indicator. So you look at the month of August, and you could have certainly at any point during that month made the argument that the market is extended, and you were correct. But notice that as long as we got the momentum, she keeps on pushing. But as soon as that histogram goes from light blue to dark blue, that's our heads up that the move is over, and it's time to start scaling that along positions, or at the very least, get a little bit of protection. So we look at the current market, we get our nice push here, and we kind of lost some gas. We ran out of steam, back to the 21 we go. And we really got a heads up of this from the four hour chart as early as last Tuesday. We're pumping, pumping, pumping. You can see signs of exhaustion. And ultimately, guys, this led to the market yesterday pulling back to the 21 EMA. So this is just kind of your textbook move. We consolidate at the mean, we make a two to three ATR move away from the mean, we get exhausted, you get the reversion back. So moving forward, obviously there's a lot of uncertainty in the air. We have stimulus deals getting uh, dangled above our heads, we have earnings, we have an election. My mindset here is guys, expect a whole bunch of back and forth chop. And really not just a matter of opinion, more so what is the market giving us from the standpoint of momentum? When we have the light blue bars here on the histogram, everything's leaning towards the upside. When we have the red bars, everything's leaning towards the downside. When we have yellow or dark blue, it's just a sign of exhaustion. Yellow being exhaustion of the selling pressure, dark blue being exhaustion of all that buying momentum. So it's not that I expect the market to roll over from here, though it's possible. It's not that I expect the market to rally back to the highs, though it's possible. But just based on the momentum here, we fired a squeeze. The move is over. We made a move back to the 21, and now we see where things go from here. But a couple of good lessons over the last week I want to share with you guys. So if we think about probabilities, once we make that nice move, two to three average true range moves away from the 21 EMA, it doesn't mean the market has to pull back. And again, we go back to the month of August. She kept on running here, but just think in terms of probabilities. Once we've made that good move away from the 21, there's just an increase in probability that at the very least, the easy part of the move is over. And more often than not, we're going to make a move back to the 21 sometime soon. Now, the danger, so to say, of continuing to play the market to the upside once we've made that 2 to 3 ATR move is that the move back to the 21 can happen in a really ugly fashion. You can see, guys, in back here in September, it basically happens in one candle where we wipe out an entire week of momentum. So I'm not so much an advocate to completely stop taking long positions in the markets extended, but I think you've got to do so with a little bit of protection in place. So if you guys have been following along here last couple of days or so, as the market's pumping here, I went and got a couple of call credit spreads on the queues. You know, that's my quote unquote insurance policy. There was a bunch of good looking long setups getting presented. I wanted to continue to trade them. But I'm doing so knowing the market's extended, knowing there's an increase in probability in a couple of days, in a couple of weeks. Sometime soon, we're going to make the move back to the 21. So getting that call credit spread, I sold calls at 304, and then I got another call credit spread where I had sold calls, I believe, at 309. That gave me call it an insurance policy to keep taking positions to the upside, and in the event the market loses momentum and chops back and forth, or does what it did here, coming all the way back to the 21, you have some nice profits coming in from the call premiums. And if you structure things right, guys, that insurance policy can help kind of soften the blow on a day like yesterday where your long positions obviously are getting dragged down with the market. So coming into yesterday's session, along with the call credit spread there on the queues, I had long positions in restoration hardware. I had long positions in Salesforce. And I had long positions here, guys, in DocuSign. So I got these three long positions, but I'm not coming into the week under the illusion that, you know, I should be surprised here if the market did exactly what it did yesterday. So early on yesterday morning, guys, you get restoration hardware right out of the gate gap and down yesterday morning. 
So we show you guys what I did yesterday, but two important lessons here. One is the lesson of make sure you got some protection, whether you short the indexes, you get a call credit spread, hedge yourself once the market gets extended if you want to continue to quote unquote force the issue to the upside. So coming into yesterday's session, as soon as the market opens, we get this big gap down for restoration hardware. What I did guys was basically close that right away for about a 14, call it $1,500 loss. <coughs> Excuse me, right? Reason being guys real quick is that my rule on this trade was the stock needs to simply hold above the 21 EMA. We gap down way underneath it, trade's not working. Now, regardless of what happens in the next few days, at that moment in time, the trade's not working. So I cut that thing off and quickly move on to the next one. But the lesson here, guys, is that not only by having the willingness to cut the trade when it was no longer working, but also having that, uh, that insurance policy in place, though I took the $1,500 hit here on Restoration Hardware, I closed my call credit spread on the queues for $1,400 a profit. So essentially, wiping out the loss there on Restoration Hardware like it never happened, but more importantly, not putting a dent in the monthly P&L. I quickly closed DocuSign for a small profit, Salesforce for about break even. But the second lesson here is that once you've got a position coming against you, a trader's got one of two decisions they can make. They can play the hope and pray game and sit there and spend all damn day long looking at the P&L, looking at the position. Or guys, you can just simply cut the trade, cut the cord. And what you're doing is you're freeing yourself mentally. So what I was able to do yesterday, once I got rid of restoration hardware, closed my long positions, and then booked the profits from the QQQ call spread, because I'm not attached to restoration hardware, because I'm not all caught up in the emotions, I'm thinking objectively, and I got a nice, clear mind, look at the market. So what I was able to do there is move forward and take action. Took two different positions yesterday. They turned out to be day trades, but I did a put debit spread on the queues, which I closed for just about a thousand dollars. It was a little bit more, but we'll call it a thousand. And I also sold another call credit spread on the NDX, which I closed towards the end of the day for six hundred and sixty dollars. So, the two lessons I'm taking from yesterday when I look at my own trading is having that hedge in place was a really good decision once the market got extended. Also, having the willingness to cut restoration hardware, no questions asked, frees me up mentally. I'm able to move forward. And what happens often, guys, at least for me is you very quickly can make back whatever you lose if you manage it properly. So with all that being said, that's my spiel. Hedge yourself when the trades aren't working, cut it off, no questions asked. So now moving forward, guys, we've made the move back to the 21, and while I don't expect some massive rally back to the upside, of course it's possible, what I do kind of expect is potentially for the market to kind of hang out here for a bit. You know, maybe we get the relief bounce today, obviously, we could roll over from here, but I think just based on the lack of momentum and the lack of bearish momentum, we're going to chop back and forth. Now, what I think is going to be really important here is this volatility index. So if we look at VIX, guys, I think this makes our job pretty easy right now as far as trying to potentially gauge the market's next move. We got a daily squeeze and we also have a weekly squeeze here for the volatility index. So plain and simple. We take the squeeze here, guys. In the event the squeeze fires to the upside, it's very, very unlikely that the market and individual stocks move higher and a bit more likely we see some more selling pressure. If volatility just continues to chop back and forth inside the Bollinger Bands, I think we're going to see a really choppy-ass market. Potentially, should VIX fire the squeeze to the downside, typically that sets the market up nicely for a move higher. So rather than opinion, Let's focus on what the market's telling us and use this volatility squeeze here to try to gauge the next directional move for the market. VIX fires a squeeze to the upside. We're likely coming lower. It continues to chop back and forth. Market's probably going to chop. And if it fires to the downside, market's probably going higher. So at the moment, guys, take a look at my open positions. And the only thing I opened up into the close yesterday, after getting rid of all my long positions at the open, after closing all the short positions on that move down there to the 21, is I jumped into a put credit spread on NDX, and let's pull that up. And this one expires next Friday, guys, and I went all the way out here to 11,200. Sold those puts and then bought the 11,150 weird strikes on NDX. But I got a put credit spread, and I got a put credit spread down here at 1,200. 
I'm not banking necessarily guys in the market just you know, doing some ridiculous rally from here. To me, this is more so we've made a nice drop to the 21 EMA. It's what we expect once the market's extended. And to me as an option seller, that big drop yesterday really wakes up those out the money puts. Those puts are spiking in implied volatility. They're getting nice and chunky, but it's very short lived. Should the market simply just hold up from here, those puts that got all kinds of inflated yesterday, once that implied volatility collapses, they lose all that premium. For everybody who bought those puts, tough shit. But if you sold them to somebody else, that premium decay is a beautiful thing. So that's what I did there, guys. Not banking on some big rally from here. More so looking to collect some quick premium on the implied volatility crush. So if we take a look here at the futures, uh, you know, up almost about 1%, making a nice little bounce here. So this should fare pretty well for my position. If I can take this off over the next couple of days for 50, 60% of max profit, I'd be more than happy to do so. And a good chunk of the max profit should come in just from that good old implied volatility crush. So we take a look one more time, guys, at the spreadsheet here. And the max profit on that credit spread is just about 2300 So all said and done yesterday, getting rid of the loss on restoration, break even on Salesforce, very small profit on DocuSign, closing up the call credit spread on the queues, and then the two shorts that I ended up being day trades. All said and done yesterday, closed up for about 1800 That puts me just shy of 14000 for the month. And we got what? We got, call it, one, two weeks left here. So I got a goal in mind, but I'm not going to force the issue. But the next couple of days, guys, we got earnings coming up. We have an election coming up. We've got this coronavirus stimulus package being dangled above our heads. Focus on what the market's trying to tell you. Right now, you look at the indexes. They're telling me they're a bit tired. We made a big move. The move is over. I look at the volatility index. It's telling me to be prepared for anything. If it continues to chop and to squeeze, the market's probably going to chop. The squeeze fires to the upside. The market probably goes lower. The squeeze fires to the downside here for the VIX. Good chance of the market going higher. So Twitter page at FTM alerts. Look for T's trades. Not trade advice, but this is where I'm posting all my entries and exits and screenshots of those orders in real time. So for those of you guys and girls that subscribe to the channel here and you want to see me putting these strategies and these mindsets into application, make sure you give me a follow here on Twitter. Appreciate you guys and I'll see you tomorrow morning.